Hey YouTube, today we are building this unregulated MOSFET mod in the ABM2 enclosure. Perfect enclosure for dual 18650s. Like the last PWM build, I've got the 3D printed sled with the top cover here. Hide the guts, make it look super clean. We have a new MOSFET breakout board, which you're going to see in a few minutes when we put this thing together. So stick around. And we're going to build this thing. So first thing we'll do, whenever there's uh, components to epoxy, we'll do that first. And while that's curing, we can work on the rest of the mod. So the voltmeter is the only thing that needs to be epoxied. I like to snip off the little tabs on it here. We'll peel that protective coating off. <clears throat> now the cutouts for the voltmeter, the corners aren't perfectly 90 degrees, so I, I file down the corners a little bit, a few passes on each corner here of the voltmeter. And the reason for that, uh, or the reason the uh, cutouts aren't perfect 90 degrees is the the tool that does the machining is a round bit so the corners can never be a perfect 90 degrees when you CNC machine stuff another new thing on this video I've got a second camera set up which you can see here capture some of the close-ups I'll lay a piece of tape down on top of that Make sure it doesn't move when we're applying the epoxy. And an important thing is I like to try and get the voltmeter like a millimeter or so below the face of the enclosure, which you see me doing here. This way if you lay the mod down on its face, it won't scratch up the front of the voltmeter. So we'll mix up our epoxy. And we'll apply it around at least three of the sides. We can't really reach the bottom of the voltmeter. Give a final wipe on the front there, make sure the lid closes properly and that top cover can sit as low as it needs to. So that's done. Next then, that uh, breakout board. So we'll solder the onboard surface mount components. Uh, first thing are the fuses. Apply a bit of flux to the pads and in this case to the component to the the lead on the fuse itself and we'll load up some solder onto the iron and just paint that on there now that one side's done yeah i can hold the board instead of the component And do the same on the back side here for the second fuse. I'm going to reflow that top one. There we go. Next, there's a little resistor that goes on here. Same deal. Apply some flux onto the pads. I find holding it with uh, my thumbnail 
is how I can get the most precise with it. Load up some solder. Now you want the iron to touch the pad and the component, so both heat up hot enough to flow the solder. You load the tiniest amount of solder on the iron when you're doing surface mount components like this. Last component is the MOSFET. Now the pins on here are kind of small. The first one on the top right that you're seeing here is what operates the gate. And so you want to make sure that one doesn't bridge to the other pins. Then on the back here, the whole back tab is a single pin. That one's easy. And the bottom three pins on the front, if these bridge, it's not the end of the world. They are internally connected. Reflow the back a bit. That uh, flux paste can get sticky, so I like to use a Q-tip and some alcohol and wipe down the board when I'm done. That looks good. Next thing then, we'll tin our battery contacts. A bit of flux. Load up some solder onto the iron and just paint that on there. Now the video is going double speed so the iron hangs on um, twice as long as what you're seeing there to really make sure you heat up the clip and the solder. Same procedure for the rest of them. And we'll get these onto the sled so I can measure the length for the wire that'll bridge the top of the sled. Now I'll strip the whole piece of wire here. Uh, that insulation is a few millimeters thick and it, it pushes the uh, exposed part of the wire away from the contacts and makes it harder to solder. So I'll tin half, strip the remainder of that insulation and then tin the whole wire. This way it could sit uh, flush on the contacts. Always a bit of flux. You see me loading the iron on the top right there and paint that on. Now we're working with a short run of wire with the insulation removed, so I've got my Michael Jackson glove on there. It's uh, vinyl coated so it's actually pretty heat resistant so I can hold components like that uh, and get the soldering iron really close. Uh, I've said in a lot of videos not to solder onto 3D printed sleds with the contacts on uh, the thermal plastic, in this case the ABS that's used for uh, 3D printing will melt at a much lower temperature than the iron's at. 
uh, so I don't necessarily suggest doing what I'm doing here. Um, and if you do, you got to be really fast about it. And the only reason you can go fast here is the contact is tinned, the wire is tinned. I've got a molted blob of liquid solder on the iron, so just touching the two melts everything together in a second or two. Now for the other side of the sled. We'll strip and tin the positive and then the negative wire. And see how little time the iron spends on there. And watch how it'll all melt together as soon as that molted solder touches there. Same with the negative. So sled's done, on to the next thing, which is, let's get our 510 done. See, there's a little rubber gasket on it. You want to remove that before we apply heat to it. I'm using 16 gauge silicone coated wire for this. Same that I used on the battery sled. Now to push the pin out of the 510 body here, I put it in the alligator clip and you'll see when we zoom in, that compresses the spring and pushes the pin out as much as it can. A little bit of flux in there. I'm gonna load a load some solder onto the iron. And you want the iron to touch the tip of that pin and the wire. I'm gonna apply some more here. That looks good. Five ten negative. I just bear a really small portion of the insulation. We'll tin that. More flux on the 510 tab. Just paint some solder on there. Five ten is done for now. I'll start attaching wires to the MOSFET board. These are the two for the fire button. These are 24 gauge. You can go lower, 28 if you want. We'll tin those. And I want these to run under the board. Not the rest of the wires will be 
poking out of the top of it. These are small enough that they can tuck away under the board easy. So a bit of flux on the pads. And touch some solder. Again, touching the pad and the wire. Melt everything together. The color doesn't matter here for the fire button. Uh, it's not polarized, so there isn't a plus and minus side for the fire button. Those red circles you see in the bottom are just some stickers that when the sled's in, it makes the, the plus cutouts red. So here we'll do a dry assembly so we can measure the lengths of all of our wires. I'm adding a tiny piece of double-sided tape on the back of the board just to temporarily hold it into place while we're doing this. So it'll sit about there. And first, the wire's coming off the battery. Give yourself a good centimeter uh, longer than you need, because we're going to strip a bit, and then it needs to like bend down into the through holes on the board. So at least a centimeter, about a quarter inch, longer than you need for all of these wires. That was the voltmeter we just measured. And then the 510. Again, give yourself some slack, quarter inch more than what you really need. And then you'll see in the when we're assembling the board here, I actually stripped some of these maybe a, a bit longer than I had to. Sorry, not the fire button. Measure those. Um, and it it worked out. You'll see, but uh, I could have given myself even a bit more uh, slack or extra length on there. You can always uh, cut more off if you need to, but you can't add some, so. All right, now we're gonna snip all those to length and tin everything. Battery sled done, you are 510. This one I meant earlier, I stripped a bit more than I really needed here. I'll end up trimming that after I solder it onto the board. Five ten wires are tinned. Now these two wires here for the fire button. And those and our voltmeter. The voltmeters have a PVC insulated wire, which isn't as flexible and easy to work with than the silicone wire I use everywhere else, but they're pre attached on there. Now to start assembling, so the two holes up top are for the voltmeter, these are polarized. The side of the board with the fuses is the positive, and the other side with the MOSFET on it uh, is the negative. The wire goes through the hole, a little bit of flux, which I applied before here, and then load some solder onto the iron.
Next for the 510. Again, the right side where you see the fuses, it's the whole, that whole side is a positive run. And the side on the left, that whole side is negative. And these stick out quite a bit, so I'm gonna trim those back. That looks good. And for the sled, so we'll get the sled in there. Positive side's done, and the negative side of the sled. And I get a good angle here with the camera. So that pretty much does it for the board. See if I can route some of these wires a little better. Making sure I got enough length to reach the 510 there. Should be all right. Oh, the board will be held down with double-sided tape and I use this 3M exterior grade double-sided tape. Uh, it's super strong and because the battery sled is more of an enclosure sled in that it covers the bottom there, uh, well I'm, even if you'd be on the bare metal enclosure that tape would be enough insulation but in this case we're going on to the plastic So we'll start assembling most of the mod here. I'm putting the nut on the 510 without the positive wire attached. The top of the sled there, if you attach the wire first, you won't be able to get the nut behind it. And the nut kind of sits between the sled and the top of the enclosure. Which is why I'm doing it this way. And then we'll be able to screw in the body of the positive 510 in there. Like that. We'll tighten that up a bit. You don't want to go too tight. Those threads are in the plastic sleeve there which you don't want to strip and our fire button there's a rubber gasket on the front of the button uh, and if you what I'm doing is I'm pushing down on the whole button with my thumb there, which is compressing that gasket. Um, and so you don't need to go super tight with the nut because when you release the pressure, uh, that gasket really helps to hold and lock everything in a place. So a bit of solder on the contacts. 
And although we used different colored wire for the two wires that are heading to the fire button, it's not polarized, so it doesn't matter which side the button these go on. And a bit more tidying and routing of the wires. This all looks pretty good. We'll do and one thing that I should have done earlier. Uh, the top cover screws onto the sled there, and I've got these brass knurled inserts which just melt in to the sled, like you saw there. Uh, there's a hole in the sled to accommodate them. It's a little smaller, but then you hold the brass insert and the hot iron on it, and they just melt right in. Now we'll tighten our 510. It's the 510 tool. I, uh, ground down a wrench here to be able to hold the inside nut if not use some pliers and be careful if you're doing what I'm doing it's easy to slip with the vice grips on top there and you can scratch up the finish so and I give a final turn here once the nut is tight to align the grooves in the top of the 510 I like a nice X Little sanity test. Get some batteries in there. That looks promising. Before we vape this thing. Let's get the top cover on there. You see the nut on the fire button there uh, is preventing the top cover from sitting down as low as it needs to. So I just moved the nut so the, the flat part of it uh, is parallel with the top, which lets the cover sit a bit lower. And the two M2 screws that hold on the top cover. That's looking pretty clean. And last, the magnets. You've probably heard me say this in the other videos, but I like repeating it just in case. Put all your magnets in a stack, mark the opposite ends, then you feed from the unmarked side of the stack. Make sure you don't mess up the polarity on these magnets. So always feeding from the unmarked side of the stack. And that's some CA glue, super glue that I'm using. the early days I would use epoxy for the lid magnets but it's more trouble than it was worth harder to work with the CA glues works fine and it's a lot faster now if you 
have too much glue on there, it may squish out around the magnets and it can dry kind of white and hazy. So what I'm doing here is I've got a Q-tip which I dipped in some acetone and I just do a little quick cleanup or wipe on the magnets. So we'll let that dry. And here we are. The finish on here is the gunmetal textured powder coat I have. It's practically black. You might be able to see in some of the light there. There's a bit of sparkle to it. It's like a dark charcoal. And that's the ABM 12 millimeter fire button. Let's get a tank on here and give this thing a vape. Now I won't hit it too hard. The atomizer there isn't really designed for the high voltage that's going on here with the series unregulated. Kind of like, a, I guess, a noisy cricket setup series unregulated. But that works. So recap and unregulated MOSFET mod dual 18650 in the ABM2 enclosure with the gunmetal powder coat finish. 3D printed battery sled and top cover. Super clean. Batteries are in series here. You're getting there. 7.4 nominal volts output. So thanks for sticking around and watching. And we'll catch you next time.